look at that. All right, you know where we're at? You better know, son. This spot is very important. It's got a lot of history here. See that back there? That's what's left of the CNC shaft. That's right, just a big old crater now. That's right, we're in Virginia City. Come on now, boy, you know that. Look up there, you see that? That's the structures that are left. See that, and you hear the train in the background. All right, so, yep, that's the train. I can hear the train, he's getting ready to go to Carson City. Anyway, you can see the foundations there for the hoisting works for the great CNC shaft. Structures were here were massive. Now, what are we gonna do today? I know I've done videos before in Virginia City, but I'm gonna go over some geology and I'm gonna teach you some things that most people don't know about out here. But I just wanted you to get take a look at this. And of course, all this stuff is gone. Why? You know why, boy, come on now. The scrappers came through around World War II and what did they do? Anything that wasn't bolted down, even that, they took. And that way they could sell the scrap and that would be for the war effort in World War II. But I want you to take a look at these bolts. Just take a look at some of this, son. Look at this, see this? See the side of that bolt right there? Look at that. That's a big old marker. And what they do, you can see right there, they came through with a cutting torch, cut everything off. Anyway, this is a hoisting works here. Massive, massive scale. Anyway, I'm gonna take you across the way. I'm gonna give you a geology lesson because I think it's important. But I want you to see the CNC shaft. This entire area produced eight million, count it, eight million ounces of gold, Sonny Jim. And I'm gonna explain the type of gold that came out of here. And this is just one of many shafts that were in the area, but the CNC was one of the most productive. Like I said, you got foundations everywhere and you got these bolts everywhere you see that monka right there you see it all right well let me take you over to the combination and we'll go into some details about the geology because i know that's what you want to know so you know what i'm going to say huh so come on let's go all right now where am i i'm standing on the mine dumps not tailings piles but anyway i'm out here on the mine dumps and i want you to get an idea of the size and scale of this stuff first of all here's some of the original posts of the trestles they would build. They'd build these big trestles out there, span across the valley, and then they would slowly dump, 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 dump till all the waste rock came up to the top of these trestles. They just build them way out. Now, take a look at this. See that? That's all waste piles from the CNC shaft. Now, I'm standing on tons of it right now. And if you look across the valley, you're going to see even more in the background. You see all that? You see it? All waste pile. And a lot of it's all quartz. And you got a whole bunch of what's called propolite, which is basically altered andesite, which is where they were finding a lot of the gold and silver up against. So it's just basically andesite that's been hydrothermally altered. Anyway, this is some really interesting rock formations in here. And I'll show you later, but I want you to get a, a size and scale of how much material that they pulled out of just the CNC shaft alone. I mean, it just, to imagine all that came out by hand is amazing, isn't it? And the pile that I'm standing on, look at this. This thing is massive, just massive mine dumps here. They span all the way across. I'm gonna take you across the valley over there to the combination shaft and give you some geology lessons. So you know what I'm gonna say, you better. All right, where are we, son? Well, you know where we're at, I just told you. We're over here at the combination shaft. I want you to take a look at this monker. You see it, you see it? All right, I can tell you everything you want to know about this darn thing. But just to cap and make it short, it's 3,300 feet deep, put together by several of the mining companies over there because they wanted to know the depth of the load because it was starting to play out. There's a reason for that. So they all got together and they put this marker together. They drove it straight down and there was nothing down there. And I'm gonna tell you why there's nothing down there. I know why. But the size and scale of everything up here is immense. Now, you're probably wondering, Jeff, how come there's only one wheel up there at the top? That's called a sheave wheel. The reason why there's only one wheel up there is because that's all they needed to hoist the rest of the equipment out before they shut it down. And what's that behind me? That's right, son of Jim. 
That's a little mini hoisting house they used to get everything out of there. Now, take a look at this. What's down there? Ooh, that's gonna hurt if I fall down now. All right, that's where the Cornish pumps were pumping the water out. Of course, Sutro Tunnel, four miles deep. They alleviated that at the 1600 foot level. That's right, look at these bolts, son. Look at the side of that mocker. Now that's a bolt, yeah! All right, now let's get on with the geology because I'm gonna explain what happened here, okay? Okay? Woo, there's the shaft down there. 3,000 feet and there's where that Cornish pump was. Told you it was deep, son, didn't I? Look at the bolts on these things. Ooh, how's that for an eye bolt? That's a big monker right there. Look at these blocks they use. All right, and there's the small mini hoisting house they use to get the rest of the equipment out. All right, let's go over the geology real quick. This is a very important load deposit. Classified as what? An epithermal. It's actually a bonanza style or bonanza type epithermal deposit. And you should know just by me saying epithermal that it's gonna, it's gonna pinch out real fast. Now you see that pit? That's at the north end of the load. That's where they were finding a whole bunch of gold and silver close to the surface. Why? Because of the oxidation. Remember I told you that. Now from about 300 to 500 feet down up to the surface, it's all oxidized. And what does that mean? Well, that means that a lot of the ascending fluids, the, the remember epithermal is that hot fluids coming up. A lot of them went to the top and then they turned around and came back down. And it's evident, you can see that in the rock structure. And then it oxidized and weathered. And so sometimes you can have replacement zones in that area because you're having descending fluids. And they would had that. And so down in that area, they had native silver. Now the silver was coming from what? Argentite. That was very common. Matter of fact, this particular deposit had a lot of sulfides in it. And it also had native gold. But the native gold was in what? Electrum because that's what you find in these epithermal deposits. But when you got down deep enough to around the 1,000 to 2,500 foot level, there was tremendous amount of gold. Now, it wasn't just like it was gold bars in the ceiling, but there was a lot of it, but it was a pale color because it was electrum. It was mixed with silver. But down in those depths, it wasn't native silver. It was argentite. Now, the CNC shaft that I just showed you, down around the 1,600 foot level, they had a whole bunch of sphalerite, argentite, pyrite, calcopyrite. They had a lot of sulfides down there, but they also had native gold in there. Now the gold, which was electrum, was found between the quartz, the heavy quartz bedding, and the sphalerite. There was huge masses of it. Now an interesting thing about the Comstock load, that most of this deposit here happened at one time. It wasn't multiple generations, but the majority of it happened at one time. And a lot of the ore bodies, the rich ore bodies were stacked on top of each other. And they would poke down and it was lo like looking for raisins and raisin bread. They were trying to find it. Well, the reason why that is like that is because when the hydrothermal fluids, the ascending fluids were coming up, mineral rich fluids, what would happen is, is the fluids are coming up, they're coming up, they're about 300 degrees Celsius. They start to boil because the pressure drops and the gold drops out of solution. Bam! All this is happening on a single plane. What happens later? You have a lot of faulting going on. The faulting starts to bring everything up on its side, about 70 degrees. So that's how you get a lot of your ore bodies stacked. So, and they were noticing that on top was propylite, which is basically andesite that's been altered by hydrothermal fluids. Below that was beds of quartz. A lot of it comb quartz and calcite, a lot of calcite. So what they did here at the combination shaft is they knew that there was a a steeply dipping fault here and they came across to the other side of the ridge to try to get up underneath there to see if there was any ore bodies left. Well if you know anything about epithermal vents you know that they're shallow in nature. It's not like mesothermal or orogenic hosted gold deposits. Now the faulting would have gave it away right away knowing that all these were laid down on a single horizontal plane and then the fault brought them up on edge. Some of them were exposed, like at the northern end of the load where they originally found it ahead of Six Mile Canyon and over here at Gold Hill. And then, of course, the rest of it has a steep dip to it, about 70 degrees. Well, they should have realized if we do the math, we'll know at a certain level it's going to play out. And it did. The ore grades started to get weaker as they went down further, which is a no-brainer. They were getting down underneath the lowest 
sections of those ore bodies that were at the deepest levels, around 3,000 feet. Well, that's why they came over here. They figure, well, there's some more ore bodies that are just a little bit deeper that are on the bottom side of that fault. Well, they went down 3,300 feet here with this big old monker, and guess what? Nothing. And of course, down there, the temperatures are extreme. 140 degrees, son. You can only work for 10 minutes. Woo, doggy! Now, if you look at all the mine dumps out here, they're what? They got this yellow color to them, and that's because of the propolite, and of course a lot of the quartz has been hydrothermally altered as well. So that's why they have this color, and it's the same color you see out of Bodie. Underneath that hill right there, you're looking at 750 miles of tunnel. Yeah, believe that. They pulled out 8 million ounces of gold and about 64 million ounces of silver. Woo, doggy! All right, now here's that hoisting drum I was telling you about. And it was the only purpose was to bring the equipment up as they were closing the shaft. It was left behind by the companies. Nobody wanted it. It's been here ever since. As they dug down past 2,700 foot level, the structure of the quartz edularia was starting to change. It went from a fine grain mass to large crystals, almost pegmatite in structure. Well, the only thing they were finding down there at that point, there was hardly any sulfides, but there was still argentite, and there was still a little bit of native gold, but it was getting harder and harder to find. Then the grades went down so low that it wasn't profitable to mine anymore. That's when they decided to drop this shaft in to see at the other end of the fault, down at the bottom, there might be some more of those bonanza pockets but they didn't find anything down there you imagine going down 3,300 feet sunny jim all that hot hydrothermal water down there waiting for you you drill a hole in to load around and hot water come out yeah now it's all that hot water that co2 the sulfur gases that created the vein alteration for the mineral assemblages that are down there it was very important for that to be there or else we wouldn't have a virginia city today now why the heck am i telling you all this is because if you're gonna be in nevada this is the type of deposit that you want. Low sulfidation, epithermal bonanza type depositions. And you could tell by looking at the quartz, the quartz edularia, it's going to be obvious that there was some kind of boiling going on. The boiling is what dropped the gold out, or maybe a pH change because of a mix of meteoric waters with the magmatic water. Now come on now, you should know all this stuff by now. And if they're oxidized close to the surface, well it's going to be real easy for you. <laughs> Woo, doggy! Ooh, did you see that? You could drive a bus down into that monker. Now, obviously, there's a plug in there. Doesn't go down 3,000 feet, more like a couple hundred feet. But a lot of people don't realize that Virginia City pulled out a whole bunch of gold, 8 million ounces. That's a whole lot of gold. But the mines all played out about 1890. And then around the turn of the century, all of it was relics until you see what you got here. So anyway, I'm going to get on out of here, son, because I'm thirsty and I want iced tea. Maybe I want to go ride a camel because I got the camel races in town. I like that. And maybe I'll do a little prospecting, too, go down in the collar mine. Ooh, yee, you know it's for sale, right? So you know what I'm going to say, huh? You better. So come on. Let's go!